to part two. As you can see, the model is still stripped down, waiting for various bits to arrive. There's still a good deal of work to do, but it's definitely benefited from its cleanup. Um, and I've had uh, a piece of information received, which actually tells me that this model could well have been produced in 1963. She has the flush glazing, as we saw earlier, and the seating. And that means she's even older than me. <laughs> but what it does mean is this could be up to 55 years old. So I think massive round of applause for trying and producing such stunning long lasting models. Now I've been waiting for my transfers to arrive from Fox and uh, I have two sheets like this. Let's hope the camera's focusing. Now there's the crests that I wanted. Now I think the big one is too big so it's probably going to be the small ones which is good because there's plenty of them which means that if I make a mess up of it I've got spares and there's some um, the camera's seeing it very well there's various numbers and letterings that will help as well so I'm very pleased with that she'll have her new crest so if I just bring down a, a dummy car sorry to be using the camera without a tripod so as you can see I think the big crest would be too much whereas the little crests fit the profile of where the original one was keep it as near original as possible shame though because you can obviously see it better anyway so that's that bit done now a job that has to be done prior to the new wheels arriving um, is cleaning out the old bearings you see there's a sort of a brown dusty muck in there uh, I want that out otherwise it's only going to increase the wear so I'm going to find a way to do that so the wheel bearing cleaning process using a cotton bud and my good old IPA I give it an initial wipe round and then I found this little tool that is, came in a sort of a Dremel kit which gets in the holes just perfectly and very lightly using just finger pressure it's great for cleaning out all the muck that has accumulated over the last 50 plus years so I'm now going to do every axle box like that so that she's ready for her new wheels now this is a bit that's been worrying me if you look on the front of uh, the nose there is what appears to be a patch of glue so it's rather ugly on the front there so I'm wondering what to do with that it's going to be my next task now I kept picking away at it with the back of a scalpel and I don't know if you can see it's starting to pe peel off like a flake so I can't do this on camera but I'm gonna risk trying to lift that and see what we've got underneath it actually came off quite cleanly and uh, there is said patch of glue so I think probably it's a little bit of a buff and that shouldn't be too bad well, I'm really pleased with that and there we go that was one of my worst fears for this I thought the glue may have damaged the plastic underneath a very very slight hint of where it was but overall that's gone of course when I stick the crest transfer on the front that should hide the last little bit of it good news right here we are it's uh, time to start fitting the wheels and the ones I'm going to use are these Hornby 12.5 um, I was going to go for the plain disc but the three hole will be just as good but uh, what we need to do first is pre-fill the axle boxes with oil and I am using on this occasion and I don't usually use it for axle boxes is Hobby Lube Gear Lube HL664 and the reason for that is this is quite a bit of wear in the axle boxes and I want to protect them from any more so this will stay in place longer than any oil so I'm just gonna until it goes shiny. I don't know if you're picking it up on the camera. I need to just flip her over to do the other side. Doesn't need gallons, just enough 
to fill the hole. Now, as this is such an old model, we've already established it could be up to 55 years old, we need to be very careful about flexing the bogey frame, so I'm just going to concentrate on that really. And there we have the first two new wheels, which seem free enough. No problem, is it? Right, well, you've seen me do it once, so there's no need for me to show you uh, all again. So the next bit, we'll probably have a look at servicing the motor bogey. So here we are with the motor coach. And uh, as we've noticed before, someone has added pickups to the back bogey. Now, it's not authentic, but do you know what? It's probably a good idea. So I'm going to try and leave them. Partly loosen the securing screw in the roof here. Put them to one side. And we then I'll thread that wire that they've added. And we can get the motor bogey. There she is. The motor bogey we all know and recognise from our lovely EMUs. Now I was considering not doing them. Um, a demonstration on servers in this but for completeness I think I will and there's a few interesting points to cover so that's what I'm going to do now the first thing I'm going to do is desolder these wires they've added and uh, then we can get out the motor bogey and look at it in close up so here is a well-known motor bogey now surprisingly a magnet is super strong I was thinking I was going to use the magnet recharge on it, but do you know what? I don't think it's worth it on this one. So that, whether it's been recharged somewhere already, but if it's original, it's done very well to keep its charge. It must have been redone, absolutely must have been. And we're just looking now at the brushes. They're certainly not new, but there's plenty of life on them. I was, I had a pair selected already over here to go in, but you know what, looking at them, there's plenty on there and they'll be nicely shaped, so no need to do that. But she's gonna need a good clean out. Now the wheels are not original, as we already said at the start in part one, and one of them is buckled, but the seller has kindly said he's gonna send me a new set of wheels. Um, they look like um, Hornby diesel wheels that have been fitted onto the axles. Quite a clever idea, really. So nice and smooth. They go through the normal Pico points and things. Um, so yeah, that's good. So we'll, we'll, we will service it up as it is and see what she's like. So the first job is to remove the two screws from the bottom plate, carefully without breaking the wire, move the plate across and remove the wheels. The insulated side of the wheels, plastic inserts, goes to the pickup. And uh, I've emphasized this before, can't pick this up. But these bearings here are the Achilles heel of these motor bogies because when they wear, it allows the wheels to rock, which means you lose pickup on the return and you get erratic running. Now, because this has got the extra pickups, that wouldn't actually happen very much. But if you were having it with bulk standard, yes, it would. So we need to make sure that they are very clean and there's no fragments of metal and then really well lubricated. Now to clean them, use nothing more than a cotton bud with a bit of IPA on it. Do not use anything abrasive because you're increasing the wear. And if you increase the wear, you write the bogey off really. We've seen so many over the years which have been uh, burnished out with burnishers and dremels and all manner of things. It's really, really not a good idea. You've got nothing more than IPA to soften the remaining uh, grease and oil and the cotton bud. That's all you're going to need. And you can see the muck comes off. Now 
there we go that looks pretty good to me now when we come to the wheels I'm gonna hold it under the magnifying glass it wouldn't have helped the viewer at all would it so we equally need to make sure that the axle is nice and clean same thing IPA combat and really make sure that it's completely clear of all the impurities now because we know this is an old girl extra step which I won't bore you with but I'm going to get this cotton uh, toothpick and go through every cog and clean it out to make sure there's nothing in it as you can see it's drawing out stuff already so I'll come back once I've done that right so we have some nice shiny driving wheels um, but the next trick is to clean up in the motor bogey itself and that is just again the old cotton buds and going around removing all the deposits that have built up over the years I don't want any of that it's pretty filthy and just like we did with the pinions we now need to clean the worm and a good way of doing that is to turn it and let the cocktail stick scrape it clean which is what I'm going to do off camera it's a lot simpler okay so what I'm now doing is releasing the motor brushes so that we can clean the commutator and again is our old friend the cocktail stick makes it very difficult trying to do it on camera so that you can actually see what I'm doing just make sure you've got a nice sharp end and go between the segments and then again IPA not the beer the cleaner polish up the commutator uh, this is again something you only ever want to be using gentle cleaning on nothing harsh certainly nothing abrasive because it's only a certain amount of thickness and it will start looking that lovely copper color that you can see there now and that's it nice and clean wasn't too bad to be honest give the brushes a clean up as well on the faces of them and also where the spring wires press commonly you see there's a bit of corrosion in there commonly that uh, is a cause of bad running believe it or not a blob of solder on that I wonder how long that's been like that the cotton buds in better days too isn't it but it'll suffice for what we need so those are those two bits clean so it's going quite well the only other thing I'm going to do clean up the wire where it connects to the brush there because that's the return through the chassis we'll make sure that screw is tight in there and uh, we can put it back together oil her up and have a try okay so we come to lubrication I always recommend myself hobby lube oils because they're just really good stuff the one I'm going to be using for the bearings on the motor is the medium oil HL663 so where we want to get is in this bearing here now certainly put a few drops on the foam pad so that it can wick in but also get in and give the bearing a drop of oil there should be just a little bit of movement on there which tells me the ball races are in place still same for the other end a few drops on the pad to act as a reservoir um, it's very difficult to get the camera to focus and just a drop straight onto the bearing and that is the only bearings on the bogey at the moment so what we're going to do is give it a spin up and see how the motor's running There's a little bit more noise than I'd want really. I 
Ah. It's to do with the brush plate. A little bit of unevenness. Seems to be fixed by moving it. You can hear the it's just pulling the brush against the commutator end, so just pull it over and that should stay in place. So now she's running fine. Pretty good, eh? All right, let's put the wheels in and see where we end up Put with that. the wheels back in. Insulated side goes to the pickup. Insulated side goes to the pickup side. And then using the HL663 medium oil, a really good splurge into those bearings. Remembering that we don't want any wear occurring there. That's conductive neutral, this oil. That means it won't cause shorts like uh, Electrolube used to, but it will allow electricity to pass in close proximity. So that's exactly what you want. So they're nicely oiled up now. So I'm gonna put the bottom plate on, which is just inserting these screws. We've now swap back to the HL664 gear lube. And we're gonna coat the worm with that. Pay particular attention to the mid region because that's actually where the pinion engages. And the great advantage of this gear loop is it doesn't fly off at all, so where you put it is where it'll stay. There. there we go, it's on the rolling road. And doesn't sound too bad at all. You can see the slight wobble due to the wobbly wheel. Uh, as I say, it's going to be replaced, thankfully. It turns another one of the good old trying motor bogies all ready for service. So, excuse the handheld, but here we go. The Blue Pullman rides again. Still lots of cosmetic stuff to do, but there she is. A testament to Trying's ability to produce good quality, play-worthy trains. So what have we got to do? Well, I've noticed that on the Backman and Real Thing, you had silver steps there for the driver to go in. We need to tidy up the Pullman livery, and of course, we have the all-important front crest which is currently missing on both ends now so we need to do that then rewheel the rest of the coaches and deal with whatever is causing that annoying little white blob there and then we can commission her and she can ride again in all her glory